Hi, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial. This is part two of the Asteroids game recreation. Right, so most of the hard work has been done in part one as far as setting up our scene. So now it's time to add a little bit of um, polish and also um, the gameplay elements. Okay, so um, essentially what this game is, is that you have to keep going from left to right with your uh, spaceship avoiding the asteroids. If you hit an asteroid, your health is going to get reduced. So to uh, indicate that, we need a health bar. So let's add a health bar. Uh, in the hierarchy, right click and go to UI, and we're going to use a slider for this. Okay, so that will give us a slider down in this bottom corner. Now, if you go in the scene to 2D and just zoom right out, okay, just notice this about this 2D view is that um, the game itself, although it's all displayed in the same window, uh, they're two separate objects. So the screen GUI that you can see, which is on a canvas object, if you have a look in the hierarchy, that slider created a canvas. The canvas is this square here, and this, um, I should say rectangle, this rectangle matches the rectangle that you see in the game view, whereas the actual game and all the action that's going on, which is down here, is really in a different space. So don't ever try to think that you need to align this with this, because they're two different things. Okay, so let's just um, zoom out in 2D view so we can see our entire canvas which is there. So the slider will initially start down the bottom. Now with the health bar, I kind of like having them up here. So we're going to move that. So select the slider. Over in the inspector, you'll see this little thing in your um, rectangle transform. Uh, things not very descriptive. Is it? Uh, it's early in the morning here. Um, what do we call that? A square. Okay, so in this uh, square here, if you click on it, it allows you to position and anchor the slider and any UI object. So we're going to put it up in the top corner. So we click there first. That will set the anchor for that object. And you can see that up there. So it will move relative to the window from that top left corner whenever the window resizes. Now to actually move the slider up there, if you hold down the Alt key and click again, your slider will go up there. Okay, now you might want to move it away from um, being right in the corner. So if you just select it and drag it down, you can move it, you know, to about there. Um, if you're in this view and you can't see these little blue dots, then cl click on this button here and that will give you those blue dots so that you can adjust the size of this slider. And now while we're in here, we can actually just modify that to the size that we want uh, for our health bar. Okay, so let's go with that. Uh, now, a slider has like a toggle handle thing on it that slides up and down and we actually don't need it for a health bar. So we're gonna get rid of it. In the hierarchy, just go inside the slider and find this handle slide area and just delete it. Okay, so now it's gone. Now the slider has a background and also a fill area. Um, this is the background and that little thing there uh, is the fill. If you click on the background, we can change the color to, let's say red, so that when we see most of the background, then we know our health's getting low. The fill area is going to represent our life. Now under fill area, if you go to fill, you'll find the actual um, component, which is this little tiny white bit. And we want to make that green. So again, select its color in the inspector and set it to green. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back to the slider. The slider can actually store your health value in it. So if you select the slider and look in the inspector, and just inside this slider component, if you go to the bottom of it, you'll see that it has a min value and a max value. Now we can set that to 100 because that's kind of the default that we talk about when we're talking about health, that we start at 100. And we're gonna set that value initially to B100 so that we have full health. Um, and we're gonna work in whole numbers. Of course, you don't have to, but you can tick that box on for whole numbers. Now, when you've done that, you'll see that the fill area itself doesn't actually fill up the entire background. 
Okay, so we can um, just go into the fill area settings and set bright to be zero. Uh, for some reason, it defaults to some other value and it gives you that little bit of an overlap. Um, but if you set that to zero, you'll now get your fill area, fill up the entire thing when you're on 100% health. Now, if you go back to slider and just play around with this, you'll see that what's going to happen as you modify this. Also, that um, fill area, it goes a little bit too big as well. And you kind of want it to be there. So let's just um, adjust that. Come back into this view here and just drag it till it's the same size. Okay, so that's in the scene where you can actually grab that fill. Right, so now we have a health bar and all we need to do is program it um, to change as we get hit by the asteroids. Right, so create a new C sharp script called Asteroid Collide. And that script's going to be attached to our ship. It's going to use a function that requires access to a collider. So the uh, ship itself um, or the object you've attached that script to, uh, which you'll see here, has to have the collider on it. Otherwise, it's not going to register the collisions. Okay, so in this script, we're going to add a function, which is void on collision, enter, collision, collision. Okay, so that's the format of the on collision enter function that Unity will be looking for when a collision happens. Um, now, before we can actually do anything to the health bar, the script needs to know about the health bar. So we're going to add in here public slider health bar like that. Now, um, in order for this script to know what a slider is, we need to add in a library up here to be using the unity engine.ue library like that. And then you won't get an error when you try and use your slider. Okay, so there's your health bar. Now, when a collision happens, we're going to reduce the health. So inside this collision thing here, let's write health bar dot value because it was the value that we were playing with before minus equals 10. Okay, so we're going to take 10 points off each time we hit something. Uh, and that's pretty much it as far as linking up the health bar with the code for the ship and the collisions. Okay, so save that. And let's go back into Unity. Now, we have an exposed variable for that health bar in the inspector. So we need to grab our slider and put it into that position. So now that script can act and take 10 points off every time we get hit. Right, so let's test that by running it. And let's on purposely hit some things. And you can see that the health is now going down. Maybe a spherical collider on our ship might be a better idea because <laughs> when the asteroids hit the top of the ship, they can kind of come to rest. Whereas if it was a sphere, they would roll off the side. Uh, but I'll let you do that. Okay, so now our health has become drastically low, but nothing has happened as a consequence of it. Uh, so let's make our uh, ship disappear when we get to zero health. So in the asteroid collision in here, let's test if the health bar dot value is less than or equal to zero, then we will go destroy, sorry, destroy this dot game object. And that will destroy the game object that this script is attached to, which is our ship. So save that and play, um, which will mean we can't actually play any more of the game because we have no ship. So now we have to bump into enough asteroids and enough times to die. There's never an asteroid around when you need one. Okay, here we go. Ooh. 
This is a game in itself trying to hit the things. Okay, so my ship has um, disappeared. It was destroyed. So it's no longer there. End of game. Now, it would be nice to have a little explosion occur when an asteroid hits the ship. Just before I do that, I'm going to get rid of this box collider because it's annoying me. And let's add a um, sphere collider to it. Okay, now let's just, just go back to 3D in the scene and find that model and have a look at what the spheres ended up doing. Okay. Actually, you know what might be better is a capsule collider. Okay, so let's just um, remove that. Let's add a capsule collider. Okay, and we're going to change its height. We're going to change its axis that it's along, which will be our is it Z axis. Yep. Um, and let's bring it down a little bit. Okay, not perfect, but at least the asteroids won't sit on top of our ship now when uh, they collide. Okay, so let's get back to those explosions. So in the um, FX explosion pack that I downloaded, there's a bunch of um, prefabs in there that we're going to instantiate when an object hits the ship. So back in that uh, collide code that we wrote before, asteroid collide, we're going to pass through our explosion. As a game object and then when we get hit we will instantiate that explosion. Now these explosion objects also need to be destroyed after they're created because they don't automatically destroy um, and you can determine that because the clones that get created in the hierarchy will will persist uh, but you really do want to get rid of them so need to um, grab hold of that explosion at the same time it's created game object explosion equals instantiate the explosion at this dot transform dot position this dot transform dot rotation. Let me just make this bigger for you. Okay, and then we're going to straight after we've done that, we're going to destroy the explosion in two seconds. So it actually gives it time to run its code to do its explosion thing and then to um, destroy it so it's gone from the scene right so save that and let's just go back to the script oh hold on I've got an error that's right if we instantiate something we need to put game object in here as a typecast um, which is annoying I don't know why it always does that but anyway let's save that okay and that should fix that error now let's go back to our ship and we will now have an explosion um, exposed variable there. And that's where we put our prefab. So let's use explosion one. All right, so let's run this. Okay, that was pretty big. Um, at this point, you might want to scale back the explosions or pick another one. That's quite a large explosion. <laughs> Uh, I think Explosion 7 actually in this pack is a better one for a sort of asteroid collision. So we'll just try that. Yeah, it's a bit better. Uh, now you see where the actual explosion is happening is in the center of the ship um, because it's being instantiated at the ship's position. Now it'll be a little bit nicer if we can instantiate the explosions at the collision point, uh, which we can do. Each collision that occurs generates a list of contact points. Now back in the asteroids collide code, I've already added this in and I'll show you where it is. So just before we instantiate the explosion, we're creating a um, contact point variable called contact. 
and we're setting it to the collision dot contacts um, the first contact in the array so this collision dot contacts is an array of all the contact points when a collision occurs uh, and we're only really concerned about the first contact point although you could probably get all of the contact points and create um, explosions at all of those if you were really keen but in this case we're just grabbing the first one and putting it into contact so we use that contact down here instead of the ship's position to create the explosion we create the explosion at the contact point all right so once you've done that just go back and play now if you can uh, manage to hit an asteroid here comes one you can see where it's now hitting is that those um, contact points are where the collider is so you can see it just hit on the edge there um, rather than in the center of the ship and that just makes for a, a bit more of a realistic effect than the actual ship um, exploding um, right in the center Okay, and speaking of the ship exploding right in the center, we might also want the ship to actually explode when it's when you run out of health, basically. So we can do that also if we go into here again and add um, another explosion object. Explosion um, death or something like that. So we'll put our um, death explosion in there and then we're going to instantiate that down here at the position of the, at the ship after the ship has been destroyed. Um, but actually we need to do it beforehand because uh, if you destroy the ship at this point, remember this code is attached to the ship and any code afterwards won't run. So you need to have it happen, sorry, you need to have it happen beforehand um, before destroying your ship okay so we're just going to grab this code to make life easier and we will um, probably give it explosion 2 as a name and in here we want explosion death and we this time want it to be at the position of the ship Okay, so that's going to instantiate the explosion before the actual ship object gets deleted. But because this is happening in the same update loop, um, you're not going to uh, notice it. The ship will just kind of suddenly delete as the explosion is starting. Uh, so in here, we also want to destroy that explosion object. Uh, let's say after maybe three seconds in this case. Okay, so uh, let's, um, before we do that, let's make this health go down by 20 just to make it all faster when it runs. Let's save that. Let's go back to Unity, select our model, find an explosion prefab. Now that um, prefab explosion one was pretty spectacular, so let's use that as our death one. Okay, and now we will run it and try and hit some asteroids. Okay, so there's one. And the asteroids are actually falling a lot better off of our object now too um, because of that capsule collider. Okay, and our ship blew up and it's now gone. Okay, so uh, that's working well. Right, so let's now add some health um, pickup bonus points um, by a different type of asteroid. So first of all, we've got this spawner, this cube here that spawns our um, asteroids that cause damage. Let's duplicate that so that we have another one. And let's just um, leave it in the center of the screen. We're just going to move it up above here. Now, um, let's call this um, bonus, bonus spawner so we know which one we're talking about. And... It's still spawning this other asteroid that we created before. So we need to create a different looking asteroid. So let's go back into this rocks pack prefab and find something a bit different. Let's drag in this rock, which is obviously huge as well, and scale that down. Uh, 
And I just want to bring it down into the scene so we can see it, what it's going to look like in the camera view. Pretty much looks like the rock we already had. Did I pick the same rock again? Okay, doesn't matter. Let's rotate this around. Let's make it a tad smaller so it's actually harder to hit. And we will add a different material to it. So I'm going to go into the assets um, and we're going to just create a new prefab out of that particular rock. Okay, and I'll call this bonus. And its material which will be attached to its um, mesh. Find it. There it is. Okay, so this has got rock mat one on it. Let's create a new material. And let's set it to yellowy orangey color. I want it to look like gold. Uh, so we might turn up the metallic and smoothness of it. Gives it a nice sort of sheen as you can see there. And then we will add that new material, which I should give it a name of gold, to this um, group here on this prefab. Okay, so let's um, just apply on that prefab so that it will now be updated for this particular rock and you can see that it's gone a shiny gold color so that's our bonus we've applied it and you can see now we have our bonus one down here which is a gold looking asteroid and we have our normal asteroid that does the damage there okay that's great so let's just delete that bonus one out of the hierarchy now in order to be able to tell which asteroid we've hit we need to uh, tag them and the tag allows us to then check in our code what type of thing we've hit. So let's go to this asteroid here, which is our um, bad asteroid, and give it a tag of bad asteroid or bad rock or something. Um, so we hit this tag section in the top of the inspector and we need to add a tag. Okay, so we'll add a tag and we'll call it bad just because that's easy to type and we'll also create a good one while we're in here okay so we now got two new tags now that process doesn't add the tag to anything so you've actually got to go back through the process again of clicking on your asteroid and we're working with these prefabs now um, back to the inspector and go bad okay so it's now tagged bad and any clone that gets created will also be bad let's go to the bonus and we will go to good. Okay, um, now the other thing we need to do is our bonus spawner. We need to check that that's spawning our bonus, which it's not, it's still got the old asteroid. So grab that bonus and bring it over to here. Okay, now uh, I think if we check on our bonus, it also doesn't have a rigid body or a collider on it. So let's add a rigid body, just like we did with the original asteroid, and we'll also add a sphere collider to it. Okay, now I should have done this before when we were looking at it in the scene, so I'm going to have to drag another copy of it into here so we can just check on its um, actual collider. Now it doesn't matter where it's sitting in the scene really at this point um, because it's going to be spawned from that cube. Okay, so we need to make this bigger again. This could even be a, a, a capsule collider actually because of the shape of the thing, but um, we've committed to a sphere and then we're going to move it up a little bit and across. Okay, that will pretty much do. So apply that to the prefabs. Okay. Right, so let's delete that. And let's just run 
Uh, the bad asteroid, actually everything we hit is still going to cause us damage. Just checking that those um, gold asteroids are actually working now. Yep, okay. Right, so now we can go back into our collision code and check for what we've actually hit and then give uh, ourselves um, negative health if it's a bad asteroid and positive health if it's a good asteroid. So in this uh, collision code where we're instantiating our explosion and checking for the health, here's our negative health and here's our explosion that happens when we hit a bad asteroid. So let's just first check the type of thing we've hit before we run that. So it'll be if collision.gameobject.tag equals bad then we're going to do this else not explosion else else if collision dot game object dot tag equals good don't really need this other if um, because it's going if it's not bad then it is good but if you were to add other objects into your game with different tags on them then you would still need to check this now if it's a good one we're going to increase the health by uh, let's make it hard 10 so you lose more if you hit a bad rock um, and you need to hit a lot more good rocks to get better health and um, at that point, just checking, we don't need an explosion or anything. Okay, so we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so save that. Let's go back into here and play. So get our health down. Now I have to try and hit some... What's the chances I'm going to die before I see a gold rock? Here comes one. A lot of gold rocks I'll have to hit. Yeah, okay, so that's working. You can see the health now is going back up when I hit the rock. The other thing that's not going to happen is um, if I hit enough gold rocks, I'm going to end up with a lot of health, more than I need, uh, which if you want to set that to be a fixed amount, we can do that down in here. So after you've added health, you can also then say if the health bar dot value becomes greater than 100 then we can just set it to 100 just like that uh, and that will stop you accumulating too much health beyond what your health bar um, can hold so let's just save that um, chances are also that the health bar because it's set to a maximum value of 100 that you won't be able to but if you were doing this another way then you would need to um, have a cutoff point for this value. Um, okay, so that is um, good and bad rocks and health going up and down. The last thing we should do is probably add some sound effects, one for bad and one for good. Right, so what you need to do now is go and find yourself uh, two sound effects. The bad one can be an explosion and the good one can be a um, like some kind of a bonus score type sound. Right, so I've just uh, found two MP3 files um, from sounddogs.com and dragged them into here. I've got a bonus one, and if I just press play, you can hear it. And an explosion one. Yep, okay, so that's what they're going to sound like. Now, these two need to be added to our um, ship, and we're going to add those as audio sources. So add an audio source and set it to bonus. So we drag the bonus from the assets and put it into the audio clip section. Okay, so that's our first one. Now the other thing you've got by default on these audio sources is this play on awake, um, which is set by default. So if you've added an audio source and then you play your game, it's going to automatically play that for you, which you probably don't want to happen. So always tick that off. And you'll know you haven't ticked it off because as soon as you press play, it uh, will play. Now we want to add another audio source. 
which we're going to set for our explosion up in the audio clip turn off play on awake okay now we need to pass those audio sources through to our code so let's go back into our asteroid collide and at the top you want public audio source um, bonus sound and public audio source explode sound like that now the bonus sound is going to play uh, down in here when we've hit a good asteroid so inside this if part of the statement we can put bonus sound dot play for that one and for the other one where we're creating that other explosion on a bad rock, we can put explode sound dot play like that. Okay, so save that. Go back to Unity. Uh, select your ship and you'll see it's now got two spots here where you can put your audio sounds. Uh, now, unfortunately, you can't see what the audio sounds are unless you open them up. And I think the top one was the bonus one. Yep. So from here, you have to grab that and drag it into there. And then you have to grab this one, which we are going to assume is our explode and put it in there. Okay, so now when we run... Oh, and I'm dead. Um, and there's also no sound for the other explosion when our ship explodes. So we might want a, a bigger explosion for that noise as well. So I'll just go find one. All right, so um, where is it? There it is. So I've got a big explode now, which sounds like that. Okay, so that's a good sound for when the ship finally explodes. Select the model and we add another audio source. We set it to not play on awake and drag our big explode into there. Um, okay, so back in the script, we need to bring in that audio source again. So public audio source, big explode. And then we play big explode when our ship explodes, which is down when health becomes less than or equal to zero. So we want it to play in here, which will be big explode dot play. Now the only issue that's going to happen now is this big explode is going to play, but then the object that it's attached to is going to be immediately destroyed. And that could be a problem. Um, or it would be a problem because the sound is going to be destroyed as well. So you won't hear it play. Uh, so the best way, I guess, in this case, the way we've done it is to not destroy our ship straight away. So let's set that to destroy at three seconds. So at least you get the sound. And let's keep the asteroid uh, explosion, uh, sorry, the big explosion for like four seconds. So save that. Okay, so let's go back and have a play of this and see how we go. Try and hit the... Yep. Now you can see that all of that happened and then that ship was destroyed. So that's obviously um, too long to destroy that game object. What if we put that down to two? So it'll just be about timing here, I guess. No, you can still see the ship there. Um, okay, so one solution to this problem is to actually grab the um, mesh renderer that's on our model and to disable it. Um, but that involves all of these mini objects that are part of the um, model in this case. 
I guess it's kind of nice because all our code and our colliders are on here. So we could actually just attach to this model an empty game object and call this our meshes and then grab all of the meshes and dump them into there. Okay, now if we turn this meshes off, it turns off our ship. So we could actually um, destroy this meshes component instead at the end of the game. Okay, so to do that, you'll need to grab your collider code and in here we want to know about the actual meshes um, game object ship mesh and then down in the destroy instead of destroying the game object itself after two seconds we can actually destroy the um, mesh uh, which I've forgotten what I called it oh, ship mesh ship mesh all right, save that back here and there'll be an exposed value for that ship mesh coming up. Here it is here. So let's grab our meshes for our ship and put that down into there and let's run it again. So now this time. Instead of the entire object being destroyed, it's just the meshes. <laughs> Except now, as you can see, we still have the actual game object itself and it's colliding with these things. So, you know, this is all debugging, um, which is quite amusing. So after we've destroyed the mesh, we could actually come down here and destroy the entire game object anyway this dot game object after two seconds like that so the ship gets immediately destroyed and then the game object gets destroyed after two seconds which will give it enough time to play for this big explosion all right so um, that's it for our little asteroids game I hope you enjoyed following along and learnt some things about unity um, and some little tips and tricks and uh, I'll speak to you in my next tutorial.